Hello guys, welcome back once again to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Anjit. So in today's in the PYT topic, we are going to discuss about tumor markers. Tumor markers undoubtedly is a very, very important topic. It can be asked like a very simple one-liner. Okay, beta HCG is seen in which tumor? Or you can ask them as a part of a clinical scenario based question saying that as a person with a, a mass in the breast and there is an elevation of CA15-3, what could be the most likely cancer, right? So this is how tumor markers can come in an MCQ, be it need PG, FMG or RNA-CT, right? So if you're first time here, put on a big smile. Before starting every topic, you have to smile big. So feel happy and let's learn about it, right? So the first thing of the today's discussion is what is primarily the difference between a tumor marker was an immunohistochemistry or an immunocytochemistry, right? It's a very basic difference. Tumor marker is something which is done on a blood or a urine, right? It's a blood investigation. I take a patient's blood, measure the tumor marker. Some rare instances I can take into patient's urine or a sputum or something. I, and I can measure the tumor marker, right? On the other hand, immunohistochemistry or cytochemistry, right? It's done on a biopsy slide. You take a biopsy of let's say a lymphoma and I apply a marker of CD20, it is done on a slide. That's the main difference between marker and an IHC. IHC is done on the specific tissue. Marker, tumor marker is something which is seen in the body. Sometimes both can be used, right? For example, PSA. Prostate specific antigen can function as a tumor marker when I do in the blood and also can function as an immunohistochemistry when I do in a slide, right? That's the difference. So IHC is definitely way more specific because it's done on the tissue what I have in the lab. And tumor marker is not that specific. It's a very good uh, finding as well, fine? Now, since we know what's the difference between tumor marker and IHC, let's see what can be the use case. Definitely tumor marker alone is not diagnostic. In very rare exceptions, but still, I won't uh, make it diagnostic. It, de it does has its own fault, right? It'll always be a supportive diagnosis. A PSE of 20 is definitely higher, but I cannot say the patient is suffering from a prostate cancer just based on that. A CA125, which is seen in epithelial tumor of ovary, let's say 150, 200 is definitely high, but it's also elevated in endometriosis, right? A benign condition, right? So that's why, same, PSA is also elevated in benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH. So that's why tumor marker can never be 100% diagnostic alone. It's definitely a supportive diagnosis for sure, right? The next and the most important thing is, let's say, uh, let's take a patient with a prostatic cancer, right? So we had a patient with a prostatic cancer, and the patient, we did a PSA level at diagnosis. The PSA level was, let's assume it's 100. Along with, we did a biopsy, it's a perfect prostate cancer. Then we did the treatment. We did a surgical removal of the prostate or a radical prostate screen is done for the patient, fine. After surgery, the PSA level dropped to 5. It dropped to 5 because I've removed all the chunk of the cancer which is producing the PSA, right? Now, I'm keeping the patient on follow-up. Can I say the cancer can recur? Any cancer, right? Any cancer, there's a possibility of recurrence happening, right? Let's say after two years, I'm done with the cancer. After two years on follow-up, this PSA slowly raises up to 50. So after two years, if it's becoming 50 again, which means by default, the tissues which are producing this PSA has come back or this has recurred, right? That's a very important clue for me. Instead of taking a CT scan or an MRI scan or any invasive investigation, I can just do a tumor markup. Colonic cancer. It's very difficult for me to put a colonoscope and see whether the tumor has come back or not. Use a marker. Ovarian. Again, it's not that easy for me to go and see if it's an ovarian metastasis, which we can see in an ultrasonogram, different. If just few cells, that cells will produce the tumor markers, which can be easily useful for follow-up and identification. It's very much useful for follow-up and it can help in early diagnosis of a recurrence. And definitely, it'll your management will vary accordingly, right? So the main two use cases of any tumor marker is it's definitely a supportive diagnosis, and the most important use case I would feel is a follow up for identification of recurrence, right? Now let's go to a table. It's a concise table from Robbins. Let's see how we can identify them. Fine. Human chorionic gonadotrophin or the beta HCG. Fine. So beta HCG it's primarily useful for choriocarcinoma, which is definitely a carcinoma. In addition to this, I am sure you must have read beta HCG in your ectopic pregnancy, normal pregnancy. It's also useful for hydratiform moles, right? For hydratiform moles, okay, we can use it. Let's, let me erase this a little bit so that we can rephrase it. It's beta HCG, right? So it will be useful for hydratiform mole, a uh, way to remember it. Hydratiform mole or your molar pregnancy, C for choriocarcinoma. Okay, G generally it's said it's seen in gonadal tumors, which is nothing but choriocarcinoma, right? So beta HCG, remember HC, there's those tumors where we can see elevated beta HCG. Calcitonin, 
which is produced from the parafollicular cells of thyroid obviously in medullary castrum of thyroid it will be elevated not a big rocket science right this came in the reason inicit catecholamines which is epinephrine nor epinephrine or adrenaline nor adrenaline normally is produced from adrenal medulla that's a normal set of production tumor markers are very simple if you know the physiology you know the pathology as simple as that right so whenever i have a tumor of adrenal medulla which is pheochromocytoma definitely there'll be an elevated catecholamines in the patient's blood right very simple way to identify okay ectopic hormones is just a heading ignore that for now right so we have something called an alpha fetoprotein a very very commonly repeated marker alpha fetoprotein is seen in case of liver cancer hepatocellular carcinoma hepatoblastomas whatever it is there'll be an elevated alpha fetoprotein it's actually said that if an alpha fetoprotein is about 1000 it's diagnostic of liver carcinoma right it won't be seen in any other place only in liver cancer right and non seminomatous germ cell tumor see here when i say non seminomatous it includes your embryonal carcinoma yolk sac tumor they are germ cell tumors but not seminomatous i cannot include epithelial tumors here this germinoma i cannot include anything apart from seminoma this germinoma if it's a germ cell tumor gcd stands for germ cell tumor alpha fetoprotein is a very very useful marker especially in york sac those conditions very useful marker fine so carcinoma embryonic carcinogen there are lots of mnemonic for carcinoma embryonic carcinogen but here i would say we'll go with logic carcinoma embryonic antigen is a breakdown product of mucin fine it's how it is right it's a breakdown product of mucin so any condition you know that I can have a mucin secreting tumor. Carcinoma embryonic antigen will undoubtedly be elevated. It's very simple. Colonic tumors, ovarian carcinomas, gastric carcinomas, sometimes in rare variant of lung cancers because lung can also have mucin secreting cancer. Right? The bottom line is simple. CA is equal to a mucin product. So whenever my body has a mucinous cancer, obviously CA will be elevated. Not a big thing, right? PSA, prostate specific antigen, has to be in prostatic cancer. But like I said, it will be elevated in BPH also. The range of elevation will be different. Definitely when you go to prostate uh, cancer discussion, we'll definitely have a look at that. Fine. Okay, next CS. CS 125, 199, 15.3. These are the repeated ones. I am not going to other CS. There are multiple named things here. Let's not go deep into it. Let's see how to identify them, right? CA 125, do remember ovarian epithelial tumors, which means the serous adenocarcinomas, mucinous adenocarcinomas, your brenners, all those. It might not be very much elevated in ovarian germ cell tumors. It's a marker for epithelial tumors of ovary. Like I said in the early discussion, it also can be elevated in endometriosis. It also can be elevated in other tumors of ovary as well. Benign tumors, fibromas, it can be elevated, but not as much to the level as an epithelial tumor. If it's like say 5000, definitely ovarian epithelial tumor, 200. I might struggle. I would have required something else for diagnosis. Fine. Next, CA 199. Right. There's a mnemonic for this. I took from the guy who is an Instagram sensitive question. Um, I think med school bro. Right. I am giving credit to him because I looked from his reel and it's it was captivating. Right. I am not very good in uh, doing making mnemonics. If you know me, you know me like that. Right. So thanks for med school bro and let's spread good knowledge. Knowledge from everywhere is fine. Okay. So 199. The number nine looks like a pancreas. That's what he said, right? It's uh, horizontally, if you draw a number line, it kind of looks like a pancreas. Pancreas appearance is like that, right? So, 199, you've seen in case of a pancreatic carcinoma. There's a classical, classical marker. Never forget that. 15-3, 3 looks like breast parenchyma. That's what he said that. So, it's seen in case of a breast cancer, right? Thank you, med school bro. More, a cringe mnemonic, but it helps solve the purpose to solve the question more than enough, right? Okay, that brings us to the end of today's discussion. So, we have plus, uh, read about all the important tumor markers Please read this table, take a screenshot, put in your wallpaper or stick in your uh, study room. That's very, very important. Definitely, undoubtedly, one question might come every year based on this. Fine. Okay. Thank you for your time. If you're not a part of my Telegram channel, click below and you will have the PDF of this in the Telegram channel. If you're very constantly active on Instagram, we have an Instagram channel as well where we'll put questions every evening based on the topic what we're discussing today. Right. See you soon. Till then, bye-bye from Dr. Bye-bye.